you absolute legends welcome back to the channel it's john here today doing something a little bit different we had a video last week about my garage build project and so many people enjoyed that i thought we'll do something a little bit different today strip yourselves in because it's going to be quite a long video this is part one there are going to be two parts to this video um part two and part one will effectively talk about um this our gazebo build and by the end of it we will hopefully end up with something that looks like this this is um our gazebo project and actually it's evolved from there but before that we need to talk about building it many people on the channel have seen uh, and if you follow me on twitter and facebook and all that sort of thing you will have seen that i built a massive workshop and if you haven't seen the workshop video you need to check that out um, but effectively after I built my massive workshop, uh, Mrs. John Coupland said, hang on a minute, I've not got anywhere to relax in the garden, so I need somewhere to. And this video talks about that space, that space that uh, we have built together for myself and Mrs. John Coupland. Now, it starts uh, in December 2021, and I see a photograph, a photograph on Facebook Marketplace of this this is the photograph i see and it is described as gazebo for sale and it's advertised for bear with me ten thousand pounds and um, it's for sale locally uh, where i live in lincolnshire and i message a guy and basically say hey what's what's the score with this turns out somebody i know um and effectively long story short he had built his gazebo at his house, which is a grade two listed property, without planning permission. Um, and the council came along and went, uh, what's that? And he's gone, it's my new gazebo. And they've gone, no, you need to take that down. So I go and have a look. It's freezing cold. It's January. Um, and uh, do some measurements and have a look at this gazebo. And here it is then. Here are the original photographs of it in situ. Um, here's me documenting how it's built. It's built entirely out of wood, um, apart from a metal corrugated roof with a brick facade interior. Here's me doing some initial um, looks at it. Um, it's clad with cedar wood, big old um, solid wood posts and uh, a wooden frame internally. And I said to the guy, hey, What's included for the price? And he said, well, I need it gone as soon as possible. We fixed the deal. And to cut a long story short, um, he uh, suggested that he paid a lot of money to have the whole garden landscaped during lockdown. And I'm not surprised that it was close to the £20,000 mark. Um, he said, the gazebo, I did have up to 10. I know I'm dreaming. Um, I've been offered £2,000 for it, for the materials. If you can match that, you can have it because it's going to a good home. Um, so I did. I've paid £2,000 for it. Um, and I said, that, that is to include what? And he said, absolutely everything. All this wood here, the chimney breast, um, all this wood here, this marble, uh, these marble worktops, of course, the whole gazebo um, and uh, all these logs and everything. So everything that you see here uh, is included, lighting, electrics, etc etc all this wood all these panels gates the whole shebang um, and you can see why it's a grade two listed building is that it is right next to a church it's a beautiful building um, and i'm not going to give too much away because it's this bloke's house um but it really really is a beautiful scenario so here we are then it is january the 2nd 2021 and uh, dad and i are at this property and it's raining <laughs> and we start to dismantle it and here's me documenting everything that's included uh things that weren't included are the tea and the coffee and the little rabbits but apart from that everything else was all the lighting that's a terrible photograph isn't it let's delete that um all these logs he said you can have those here's me documenting how the roof is attached together some initial measurements and how the unit's built because it had this weird little kink end square end and it's because it was built around some uh flower bed planters so here we are we're starting to dismantle it then um dad is here and uh, 
it's a case of taking down all this wood and there's so much wood and it's all battening all these are just battens 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 behind this facade was another facade that was initially built and the client didn't like it so rather than taking that down they just built over it which was weird i thought that was very strange anyway um so we remove the whole building we take it all down we take everything here's me doing um some plans some diagrams working it all out it's 7.19 meters long by 3.29 meters wide this side and actually it's um another 39 centimeters here so the posts are a bit strange and these are me documenting bits and pieces and this is us dismantling the brick fireplace and as you can see it was built around this uh, trough which we were we were told we had to leave so this whole trough area here needed to be kept and this is a facade up here uh, and not a proper chimney here's me documenting the bricks and how many bricks there were and actually the chap said he's got so many reclaimed bricks and he gave me all the reclaimed bricks as well so here are the reclaimed bricks um in my front garden after we'd moved them all and here's Mrs. John Coupland uh, on the probably 4th or 5th of January, uh, removing nails, um, tacks from every single board, piece of wood. I cannot describe to you how many thousands of nails we must have removed um, from this project before we could pull it back up. Because the plan, obviously, was to re-erect it in our garden. Um, Chap had told us that he'd treated all this wood with this product a ron seal decking rescue paint in charcoal and this is the site that we were going to be building our um, gazebo on it originally housed uh compost bin and it's right in the bottom of our garden right in the corner and here's me getting rid of our compost bin so we lay our foundation the foundation is laid in concrete uh, we lay the whole thing in one slab it's shuttering put in with some lovely um ballast and rammel in at the bottom. It's whacked down with a whacker plate as before. A lovely frosty, frosty February morning. Here it is. Here's the overall base of the uh, unit. And you can see we've put a new fence up as well in this corner. Uh, and you can see just how muddy and quagmire-ish the site has got. And uh, we wanted to um, make it into sort of an L shape in this corner and I managed to grab some reclaimed sleepers these were 10 pound a unit 10 pound each I think I spent sort of 100 quid on sleepers and you can see I've got a pond here as well this is a pond that I reclaimed and the plan is to put it sort of in that corner in the alcove there of the gazebo um, we're going to slate we were going to slate round it uh, we bought a couple of tons of slate. Big shout out to a friend at Travis Perkins who managed to grab me a fantastic deal on slate. Um, they should have been £110 a bag. He got me them for £40 a bag. You can't go wrong with that, um, especially when the cost of these sort of products are going through the roof at the moment. So this was the ultimate layout that I wanted it to be. I was going to sink, obviously, these um, slabs into the ground, these sleepers. Here's my brick pile I'd managed to ferry them all around the back and you can see that we removed our pond area from outside this part of the garden because we were going to use all of the slabs bricks and everything from that in the rammel base here and we have so we didn't want two two seating pond areas here's my uh, garage that we had built and if you haven't seen the video it is on the channel please check it out what's that standing over there uh, it's an audi tt this is uh, during the initial erection then of the frame. You can see that Crystal is helping, working really hard. We've got the first frame end screwed together. And the way that it uh, stands upright is we've plunged saw, or someone has plunged saw the bottom of these posts out and then these plates, um, galvanized stainless steel plates sit on the floor. There's Crystal and Grandad again having a, well-deserved break, lovely photographs, lovely memories. Um, and this is it then. So this is the day we start to put it up. We've laid all the pieces of wood out that we're going to be putting putting in. And you can see, uh, because I dry-stored all the wood 
um, after we took all the nails out you can see that it is time to put it together so we're uh, holding it up with the uh, pieces of wood just to stop it from falling over um but the intention was and what we managed to do in sort of a day was to get the um the main frame up and here's me measuring you can see that it is 2.4 meters uh, meaning that we didn't need planning permission um, and planning permission wasn't necessary for this build please check your local council and with your neighbors and bits and pieces if you do need planning permission the worst thing in the world is if you can build something um and then your neighbor says actually i don't like that and then you have to go for either retrospective planning permission or have to remove your project um so make sure you get your planning permission we're starting to get this frame up now then the uh frame has got one two three four five uh, um hang on two four six timber down rights and uh, all these uprights you can see that we're getting these roof purlins in as well and because it had already been manufactured and we'd taken it down there was no cutting there was no nothing it was a case of just boshing it back up uh, here's some shots of it i think this was what we achieved in day one so we've got this part up the first day uh drinks <laughs> pints of fs it's quite arty isn't it and you can see sort of day two we've started to get the rest of this up uh there's my honda lawnmower one of the best lawnmowers in the world not sure what that's doing out uh here's a close-up because i think we were struggling to see how this initially uh, went together so i took this close up and yeah obviously now we've got this corner in place so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six uprights and this corner. This corner here we need to build in. We were gonna we, we built in another corner. But the main structure, the actual structural frame of the gazebo is now up. And we're starting to put the roof boards in. The roof boards are nailed in from below. These holes here are cutouts for down lights. And that took absolutely ages lining these up and nailing these in. There they all are, laid out, ready to go in. They were all numbered as well because they were all different, slightly different sizes. And that is sort of the end of day one of putting these roof boards in. You can see it's starting to take shape. Crystal's clearly been for a walk across them. And this end was previously that, that brick that you saw earlier in the video, this brick facade. So we needed to um, watertight this end, and I've used OSB three board here, uh, one, two, three and a half boards to um, keep this end nice and tight. And obviously you won't see that inside when you're in the project, but from the external side, it will keep everything nice and waterproof and it will be boarded out on the other end. What's dad doing here? uh he's putting a clamp on for something not sure what he's doing okay so then we're building a framework at the back at the back here we rebuilt this because um it wasn't it wasn't sitting right so we, we rebuilt that for the project and you can see we've put these sort of across beams in as well because all the wood that's on the ceiling also goes on this back wall and the plan was to, to nail all that in and, and pin that into place here's some more views this is this side you can see that how we have we have put the osb board on this edge we've also got the um, slate work in here as well at this point wow look at that that's mrs john coopland in whatever that is some sort of jumpsuit um and crystal she's obviously helping uh, okay, she's painting the roof. So she's painting the ceiling boards whilst they're on the floor, just giving them a lick of paint um, beforehand. Crystal is clearly reaching enlightenment. They're having a great time. I actually like these photographs because it, it reminds me of the memories of doing this project together. That's nice. So then we start putting these backboards in. Uh, Mrs. John Coupland and I, they go along here. I think she strapped them down while I pinned them. Um, so we're starting to get the wood in now, aren't we? Wood backboards are going in. 
They're going in this corner as well. Wow, that's fantastic. I'm sure she's going to thank me for that one. Uh, we've painted this back panel. Um, this is John Keaton handling wood. With Crystal uh, enjoying it. I needed some more of these boards, so I found out where uh, the initial builder bought them from because we damaged some in the process and we've, we've bought some new ones. And you can see the back is taking shape. And uh, we've started to put some panelling on this side because it does take shape and it's uh, cedar clad now. So this is the roof. We're trying to keep the roof as dry as possible. Obviously, we've got the boards on here now. We've got these roof boards on. And uh, it's starting to become dark, become watertight, just. Still not got the roof on yet. Here's Dad. We're uh, adding guttering. It didn't originally have guttering. It just sort of fell down the back, and that was a bad design flaw. Really was just going to get the, the floor all soaked. So we've added guttering into a soak away. There's my garage looking good. And here is us. We have added the corrugated roof. It is angled, so it obviously angles down into the guttering. And that is sealed with a flash band. And you can't see it here, but it is sealed. And then we flash banded all the way around here. Roof is on then. And we're starting to get the electrics in place. First fix electrics. Uh, the electrics go underground. They're attached by an armoured cable into the garage. They are done properly. Dad is an electrician, as I say, so uh, don't try that at home. Everything's getting a lick of paint now before the cladding goes on. Crystal and Mrs John Coupland, you can see that I'm part way through cladding this now. Uh, the mother-in-law actually turned up during me doing that and tried to distract me, so I took myself away into the garden and as you can see i've now got the cedar wood battening on the outside here again it was pre-cut it was like a big jigsaw i had to label everything up but actually it looks wonderful and they're just sort of pinned into place with stainless steel pins you can see this whole wall will end up being cedar wood clad And we're now painting this back wall as well, just to uh, darken that OSB before we do the next step. This cladding's going on. And you can see that the light is shining through this back wall. Um, that was a bit of an oversight from me. Eventually, we do change this back wall. You'll see that in a moment to make it nice and watertight. So the cedar wood cladding's on. The framework is up. The OSB at the back is on, the shingling at the back and the side is down, and this back, these backboards are on. The pond is there, ready to go. And this is the cedar wood cladding in that corner. And I hated it, because I hated the fact that you could see through it. So I decided we needed to do something about that. And in the end, we OSB clad that. So the electrics have gone in at this point. This is the first fix of the electrics, the first night. We've got one, two, three patio heaters. We've got two little down lighters on the external here. And we've got all these down lighters on the inside, looking quite nice. The next morning, then, you can see we've started to get the sleepers in the ground. We have leveled them off. You can see there's quite a big difference in the height of the garden. I wanted to keep it as low as possible at the front in keeping with the front of the gazebo. You can see that we've started to get these in here. And actually, there's also some shuttering in here and some rammel because this area is going to be concreted, little concrete seating area. That's all gone into place then, and we've got some wood here. Uh, these are wooden sleepers, which are going to clad the pond eventually. And here we are then, we are putting down the concrete in this in this area. Lovely day to do that. You can see we've got our shingling in here now as well on this corner. And we've bought these sort of concrete effect stepping stones. I don't actually like them. And this uh, shingling has gone down. And so there is the next part. The, in, the internals are 
nearly done and this concrete slab is down mum then gifted us a, a tree because obviously we were definitely ready to start planting thanks mum um here is us painting sleepers to clad the pond the pond um is clad with sleepers those are about 20 quid each quite expensive and the plan was to stack these sleepers up on a on a footer and then have one uh, the other way around on top and then paint it to give us like a seating area the pond actually looked bigger before we put it in place but it, it, it fits nicely in that gap you can see we're pulling it together and uh, holding it nice and tight we've put that pond on a layer of sand to level it as well and there it is then there is the first draft so to speak of our outdoor gazebo area we've got this lovely stainless steel pond pump and um water blade there is the sleeper pond it's nice and full we made um, a sleeper bench out of some extra offcuts of these sleepers mum thankfully got us a willow and then uh, our neighbor was throwing away this little um, metal garden set so i fished it out of their skip uh, and there it is then looking good that is part one of the gazebo build um part two i think should come soon um to show you actually how we've progressed and how it has evolved and changed this is the first fix of the um of the gazebo gazebo mark one shall we say because we then do um, build internals. We build some ship lapping at the back and all sorts of stuff. But for this video, I think we should end it there. Um, if you want to know what it looks like now, I will give you a sneak peek. The sneak peek is it looks semi like this. So it has massively evolved. But we will talk about that in the next video hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, this little insight as to um, how we have built our gazebo part two will show you things like this how we've built brickwork and there will be a bonus mrs john coopland in a bikini shot um if you've liked the video please like and subscribe if you uh, want to comment about it please do if you're not following me on twitter instagram facebook and tiktok where have you been it's at john coopland all one word and until next time, um, thanks for watching and uh, take care. Bye-bye.